Welcome back to Steve Rob Reviews. Today we're going to build another one of these bird feeders. And this is just a terrific bird feeder. And I want you to look at something right there. Do you see where I've attached the uh, suet feeder to? Well, that's been there for about four days and see how much they've eaten off of it. And take a look at this side here. Yeah, they won't touch it. This particular type of uh, suet feeder, nah, it's a total fail. Don't buy these, because uh, you know what? For some reason, it scares the birds away. But that's it right there. And I'll just show you a little bit up on the top there. I got it high enough so I can walk underneath it. And we're gonna make some improvements to this one, build another one, and let's get to it. Well, let's get started right now, and I'm gonna show you all the materials that you need. The first thing you need is just some of this uh, PVC pipe you can get at your uh, local hardware, like big box stores like Lowe's and Home Depot. Comes in a 10 foot length, and you can just cut it to whatever length that you like. Okay, next thing, well, got to go with the Betty Crocker. Yeah, and that was, what's it say there? $4. That's a $4 item. And then we've got the Jumbo Pizza Pan. And uh, that was $4 too. Now, this particular build is gonna be probably harder than the last one. If you wanna take a look at the last build that I did, it might be easier for a lot of people. I'll put the link down below and you can watch that if you want. This one's gonna be a little bit harder, but I think it's gonna be better. I'm making some improvements for what I've noticed over a whole season using that one. That one still is fine, it does, the birds love it. But there's a couple of flaws to it that I'd like to improve on, only because, well, I live in Canada, right? Lots of ice, lots of snow. If you don't have lots of ice and snow where you are, well, you don't need to make any of these improvements. So let's get started right now. And the only thing that I would say that a lot of people might have a challenge with is you have to have a four inch hole saw. So that's what I'm using there. And of course you can see the two by four there. And these are all gonna to go together real easy. Now I'm not gonna paint this project because you know what, it's too cold to paint right now. I have to wait for a day that it's actually warm enough that I can paint this. And I just use regular Krylon paint. And I think this one I'm gonna pick green, but I will show a picture in the future on my Instagram posting of what it looks like. But yeah, I wait for a day that it's above zero, then I can just spray it quickly, bring it in the house and let it dry for about a half an hour and that's it. So let's get started right now. Okay, so let's start off right there. So just on my end of uh, two by four, I've got about an inch and a half in, and I'm right flush with the edge here. Now, you know on the far side, it is gonna overhang, right? So let's start drilling right now. Now this is one inch, this is one and a half, so I'm gonna have to do it, finish it off on the other side, right? But uh, for now, all I'm gonna do, I'll show you right here. That's it, we're just putting our marks in right now because there's a purpose for doing this. We're gonna take it over to the table saw now and I'll show you what we got going on there. Well, we're over at my table saw and that is a 10 inch blade and I've just got a spare block in here just so I could show you. I have it positioned so it's just right almost flush with the blade there. And you can see that this has a little bit of an angle to it. I don't want a lot of angle, just a little bit. And here's the, uh, the one that I put a hole through. And the whole idea behind this is I've got lots of two by four here to hold on to. And I can run this in just far enough until it passes right there. Then I can go back and drill out that hole and you'll see the reason why. So let's get to that right next.
Okay. Okay, here we go. Let's start drilling this out. Okay, so I'll have to turn it over, drill it the other side, and then I'll show you what we got. Well, let's take a look and see what we got so far. So we went through the uh, 2x4, and uh, this is the piece right here, and all I have did is put a 3 8 carriage bolt through, and you can see the angle on there, and you can see how I just kind of roughly sanded over the edges, kind of made it flat. Now this isn't sitting particularly flat right here, but you really don't need to, it's just got to bite in. You'll see the reason why. And on the bottom here, all I have did was countersink it and I'm going to have a wing nut on the bottom. And for the countersink, I just use a Forstner bit just to countersink it so it's nice and flush. And it is going to fit like this, right flush. Now, we can't mount that right now. I got to do the uh, opposite end, which will be the top first. Because if I install this, well, it's going to be hard to work around this, right? Okay, so let's start working on the top, and I'll show you how easy it is to put the top on compared to, well, my original design. So let's take a look and see how I'm going to do that. Well, there we go, right there. Just easy to make a little bracket like this. Just put it in your vise, bend it over, and if you take a good notice there, you'll notice that this one here is further down than this hole on this side. So yeah, it's going in on an angle, and there's a reason for that too. So all I'm going to do is this is just going to slip right in here like this, and let's get to the next part where I'm just going to bend up the rod that's going to go through here on an angle. Let's do that next. So here's the rod here that's going to go through to hold the lid down and uh, we'll just grab a hold of this. Just make a nice easy bend. Go all the way around and right about there without knocking all my stuff off the table. There. That bend right there. Well, what do you think? I think you got the idea of what's going on here and you can see it's definitely on an angle. Now the last one I had was right straight out we we're worried if this pin were to fall out. Well, it's not going to fall out if it's on an angle. I don't have to put a retainer at the end there or anything. And there it is right there. Okay, so now let's put the hole in the bottom of this so the birds can get some seed. Okay, so all I have is my two locating arrows right here that show where the front is. And I'm just going to go roughly around that line and just about a quarter of an inch higher, oh better tighten this up, but a quarter of an inch higher, maybe right about there. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these lines right down to here. Okay, nothing fancy, let's just get her cut. Okay, I'll sand that up a little bit and then we'll put it all together. Well, there's the bottom installed right there and you could see the idea behind this is I wanted to have a little bit of this that was open up to the uh, to the air better and a little bit of a bigger hole and if you notice one hole only and you know what I put four holes in the other one you don't need four holes just one hole is plenty and that's plenty enough of a hole and you could see where the seed will come down there it'll be on an angle instead of being flat what I found with the last one was a lot of moisture would build up on the bottom here and rot the seeds so every time I cleaned it out, I had to clean out the bottom as well. And uh, this one here is going to be a lot easier to service over the long term. And that's it right there. So I'll bring it back when I got the holes drilled in the bottom and the top. And you take a look and see what you think. Well, what do you think? 
So this one here has got the nice lid on it and you could see how that's fastened on the top. I'll take the lid off and show you how it all fits together. You got the rod going down and that will never fall off and I'll put my suet feeder on here first before I feed the uh, rod through so it can't fall off. And this here, well, yes, it's got the uh, holes going through it so all the moisture will fall through like the last one. You only need one hole. And before I wrap this up, I'm gonna show you what I put around here just like the other one. Well, let's take a look. See how easy it is to take the top off of this? And you know, it's as easy as that. And you know, it's so easy just to fill up the hopper now. And you know, that is a nice, easy project to do. I'm gonna show you one more thing before I wrap this up. Okay, so the last item I'm gonna show you is on the bottom. I left enough of a screw uh, threads on the bottom so I could mount a suet feeder, a bell one. And if you're wondering what this stuff is that's going all the way around the outside edge, well, I'll show you right here. When the birds take the seeds out, well, you know what happens? A lot of times they kick it over the side. If you put this on, it protects that and it helps immensely. So let me just show you. This is the, uh, the bell feeder that I'm gonna hang off at the bottom of that. And that's just going to be great because a lot of birds like to just land on these and, and feed off of it. And this is just the wire loom that you get at uh, automotive supply places. And it's uh, very easy just to wrap it around there. And it stays there. It does not fall off. You know, you have no problems at all. So thanks for joining me here today. And uh, you let me know what you think about this feeder because it's a little harder to make. But it's about $10 less you know, than buying the caps on the bottom and the top. Like I said, I'll put a link down below if you want to see the older one, the one that I made that I showed in the beginning of the video. And uh, both of them are really easy to make as far as I'm concerned. Only took me about an hour out here in the shop. I mean, once you do one, you can do them a lot faster next time, right? You guys take care. Come back again now if you haven't seen this channel before. Well, you're welcome to subscribe. Come back and let's have some more fun. Cheers.